Hi, this is Tim Martin. Welcome again to Mapping the Earth. This is part two. In this quick video, I want to talk about some basics of cartography and making map projections. A big problem, something to think about, is how is it possible to represent a three-dimensional object on a flat piece of paper? A globe is a tremendously useful item, but if we want to actually go somewhere, if we want a map to use to find locations, if I want to go to the grocery store, or visit a friend, and I need a map, carrying a globe with me won't be very useful. So how is it possible to get the three-dimensional globe or representation of the Earth onto a flat piece of paper? That's where the idea of projections come in. A projection is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. So how does one go about making or taking the globe and turning it into a map? Well, imagine for a second we have a small globe. If you could put a light on the inside of it and then wrap that globe with a piece of paper, we might be able to trace out the idea or the shapes of the countries and land masses onto that paper. The cylindrical projection or the Mercator projection is one of the early methods of making a map. You'll notice that the paper is wrapped around the globe in a cylinder and what happens is the meridians or the lines of longitude become parallel. While this is a very common map and one we may all recognize, you'll notice that it is quite distorting. In fact, Greenland is much smaller than Africa, almost 10 times smaller but in a map like this, because of the distortion towards the poles, it ends up looking much bigger. So while this is a common map and a very useful one, it has significant errors associated with it. So are there other ways to make a map projection that would be more accurate? Another projection method is something called the mnemonic projection or azimuthal projection. Notice the silent G in the word mnemonic. Here we take a piece of paper and let it touch the globe at one location. In this particular map, this is a mnemonic projection centered on the North Pole. Unlike the cylindrical projection, this is very accurate at the poles. In fact, it's accurate every place the map touches. The closer to the edges, the more distortions you see. This type of map is particularly useful for navigation because great circle routes appear as straight lines, and it makes it easy for planning. Another map projection method was to take a cone shape of paper and rolling it in such a way that it does come to a point, but also maintains some circularity. We can see a cone placed across the Earth will give a map like this and this one has far fewer distortions. Although, once again, closer to the edge of the map, you will see there are distortions. So Southern Africa and Southern South America and Australia are distorted, and this map is most accurate towards the center. There are numerous other types of projections. This selection here, just shows you several. Various map methods and projection methods are attempts to show the Earth in such a way where there are fewer distortions. Keep in mind, many of these are actually derived from complex mathematical algorithms to figure out how to take the three-dimensional surface of the Earth and project it out onto a flat piece of paper. Some of these are far more useful than others. But that gets us back to the question, when we look at a globe, what sort of projection is a globe? Is it a three-dimensional? Wait, no, it can't be a three-dimensional projection because that violates our definition. A globe, in fact, is not a projection at all. It's an actual representation or a model of the real Earth. So projections are very useful for making flat maps for the curved surface of the Earth. 
It's also important to understand that there are other times when a projection may be useful. I've had the opportunity to hike the Grand Canyon a number of times. Most recently, I hiked with my daughter, and this is a very interesting location where the surface of the earth is not flat. It was terribly useful to have a map that showed a projection of the relief or the topography of the area we were about to hike. You see, if we take unique and equal elevations and transfer those across onto lines, those can then be turned into lines on a map that we call a topographic map. You'll see here there are some areas, like this area on the other side of the river, where it appears to be quite flat. That on a map, you can see the lines are much further apart. Areas that are much steeper will have lines that are much closer together on a topographic map. A map like this may be very useful for planning the route in which you would like to hike. So let's take a closer look at some of these. The small brown lines we refer to as contour lines. Every fifth contour line you'll notice is bold and is frequently labeled. These lines again sh are always showing lines of equal elevation. A couple other terms that are important to understand is the contour interval and index contour interval. The index contour interval is the elevation difference between the bold lines, and the contour interval is the elevation difference between the standard or smaller lines. In the United States, on the United States Geologic Survey maps, contour intervals are always 5 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet, 40 feet, or 80 feet. From this, we should be able to determine the three-dimensional elevation of any point on the map. On the trip to the Grand Canyon while we were in Arizona, my daughter and I had the opportunity to climb a rather interesting named mountain. This is SP Volcano, or SP Mountain. SP Crater is rather interesting, and it is a classic cinder cone, a cone-shaped mountain with a depression in the center. Now, you'll notice there's a different type of contour line on the center of this map, where there are small hash marks. These are depression contours. The depression contours indicate the elevation is decreasing rather than increasing. Lines of equal value are referred to as isograms. In earth science, there's many other types of maps that use isograms. On the left, you can see a weather map that shows forecast temperatures. Isotherms are lines showing equal temperature. Another weather map shows lines of equal atmospheric pressure, or isobars. All of these isolines are read in the same way that contour lines on topographic maps are read. The greater the change, the closer the lines are together. The further the lines are apart from each other, the less change. Learning how to read topographic maps and weather maps is a useful skill in earth science. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope to see you again with another one of the earth science video series. Thanks for watching.